So let's swanja Barrett Edelstein. I'm at or we're at Solid Gold Podcast and I'm with Zoe Mudicha. Zoe? <laughs> hey. Hey. How are ya? I'm very good. How are you? I'm good. I'm feeling great. So for the listeners and the audience, Zoe and I met at the recent launch of her latest album, Nom Tandazo. Yes. Is that correct pronunciation? Yes, 100%. And that was a b- brilliant evening. I love the music. As I, as I said to you after the listening, it, it's very energetic and yeah. spiritual healing type of music. But we'll get into that in a moment. So Zoe, at what age did you decide, cool, you want to be in the music or creative world? And how did that journey progress to where we are today? Oh, my goodness. You know, I find with the music musical journey for me that I always say I was brainwashed into it. <laughs> okay. Because it was just always there, you know. I was born in Durban, um, over Port, KwaZulu-Natal, South Africa, raised in Peter Maritzburg, which is like maybe 45 minutes away from where I was born, mm. um, in a township called Mbali, Ewan. And... In that township, very, very typical of any township, we eat together, we dance together, we cry together, we listen to music together. So when someone is spring cleaning and playing their music out loud, we are taking that in, you know. And I I found that I experienced a lot of really sophisticated taste and a wide range of taste of music when it comes to what I was taking in early on. So in seeing that and seeing that music is the soundtrack to people's lives, I was like, ooh, I, I really want people to feel the way that I, 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 th- that I see them feel mm-hmm. when I observe where it is that I'm from, you know. So that was kind of my beginning when it comes to my journey with music. Um, but then I went to junior choir. Okay. <laughs> One day after assembly, one of the teachers was like, hey, we are staying behind. You guys are going to sing happy birthday and we're going to see what you are working with. Um, So that's where we sang happy birthday and I was a part of the junior choir. And and that was the beginning of maybe being very cognizant of the fact that there was a gift, that there was something to share. And yeah, from that to now, it's been a crazy, wonderful, weird... <laughs> emotional uh, roller coaster ride. Okay, so you were in the choir at school. So once school finished and obviously you got out of that space, was it straight away to know, okay, this is my passion, this is what I'm going to move forward into, or were there diversions in the journey that, and what were they before you got into the journey of being in the music? I think music was always there in different ways and the art expression was there in different ways, you know. So if it was in choir, it was a penny whistle group. If it wasn't that, it was doing at Stedford's, which is like your mm. competitions yeah. um, where different scholars, young scholars go and compete and get marked off of what they've prepared in terms of their pieces. Uh, sometimes it was poetry. Sometimes it was dance. Sometimes it was choirs and solo work, clarinet, piano, but it was always just there, okay. you know, um, and it was there in different kinds of ways, was able to do a lot of competitions, which exposed me to a lot of opportunities to perform, which is all I wanted to do. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's that's pretty much been the journey. It's always been that. I think the one time I wanted to be something else was a dentist in grade two. And that's only because the guy gave us like a lucky packet. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, oh. I like this. I like how this feels. I want people to feel like this. <laughs> okay, so from zero to three to four minutes in creating your music, what motivates it? What invigorates it? Is it easy every time? Mm. Is it solo creations or collaborative? Let's dive into your creative world and creative brain. Whew, wow. It is, I think it is an unknown world to me as well, to be very honest with you. Um, but for me, what lights my fire is being able to reflect the times, is being able to reflect the human experience from my perspective, at least, because mm. I mean, there's, there's all 7 billion of us, <laughs> <laughs> Yes. but this is just my, my perspective of, of how I experience the world. Um, and being able to tell our stories through language, culture, celebration, seeing our traditions, the way that we think, our fashion, mm. um, grabbing from different sonic 
experiences to create something that is entirely its own, you know. Um, and I have a lot of fun doing that and, and not coming from a place of knowing. I've been a scholar for a long time in different ways, um, doing classical studies, jazz studies, but I'm left feeling like I know less every time. <laughs> yes. Especially going into a new album, I'm just like, I have no idea what's going on, but we're going to have fun with this. So... Yeah, that's what the creative expression is for me. Really just reflecting the experiences of the of myself, mm. the world around me, the things I observe, the things I question, the things I celebrate, you know. Yeah. Okay, so as mentioned, I was at the listening uh, party for the new album and I very much felt that the music is sort of energetic healing or the frequency of healing and awakening and so forth so going into creation is that a goal or intention that you have or is that something just happens as you're doing it oh i really believe in intention and i believe that the intention of what it is that i put out and express is the thing that becomes the dna of the music uh, otherwise, for me, it's just beautiful words, beautiful gowns, <laughs> just beautiful words, beautiful lyrics, beautiful things. But I think intention is the thing that really sets it apart, you okay. know. So with this album being called Nom Tandazo, which means Mother of Prayer, it is an album that is um, really coming from that space of healing, of prayer, of our inner worlds, of wanting to water that space. Um, and I remember being in studio each session that I did, especially when I was doing like the vocal takes and the vocal layerings, I was barefoot. I asked for the studio to be dim. I lit a candle and the intention was healing. That that's, that's, that's what it was for me. And, and yeah, I just, I think it makes all the difference. I really do. Okay. So I love me a CD. Ah! I, lo <laughs> I love the aesthetic <laughs> of holding something. I love yeah. the journey of the choice, the receiving, the unpacking, the booklet, mm. listening from song one to whatever number, which I know is a journey for you guys in putting that together. I'm not sure if you're aware that CDs, cassettes, even cassettes and vinyls are making a massive comeback all around the world. In yeah. fact, last year in uh, the UK alone, 5.9 million vinyls sold, the biggest since 1990. We also, though, have these uh, streaming platforms that people listen or consume music on. What is your observation and perceptions of the landscape at the moment? So I, I respect the fact that we are living in a digital time. We're in a digital world and we are observing and taking in art in that way. I definitely subscribe to something that is more traditional, something that you can feel, touch, taste and, and experience and taken in that kind of way. And I guess maybe the idea for me is marrying both of those worlds yeah. and making sense of it that way. I'm very glad cassettes are coming back, though. I'm glad the vinyls are coming back. <laughs> I'm glad the CDs are yeah. coming back. When I was young, I would I would take those booklets out of yes. like your albums, and I would. I remember there's this. Um, Best of Paul McCartney, right? Mm. Um, uh, a song called "Band on the yes, Run." Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. And I would literally listen. I would literally listen to the song for hours while going through the lyrics and everything. Like that was that was my era. That was my time, you know. So I, I love that 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 is coming back. So for me, I was uh, we were discussing earlier. I was I was living overseas, and I came back and I wanted to get a CD player for my collection. Mm -hmm. just got this collection <laughs> and everyone was like but you can't get cds any players anymore anywhere there's no way i was going i went on to take a lot for the overseas listeners it's a, a platform in south africa where you can order stuff so i went onto the platform thing hoping that there'll be like one or two options there were hundreds of options oh, of players man. i had to narrow it down and narrow it down again eventually i got what i got and it's amazing because I've got my playlists on Spotify because I teach spinning classes, so I have that for oh, that. Oh, that's so cool. <laughs> so I put the exact same song off the platform, listen to it off the Bluetooth, listen to it on the CD. The quality of sound on the CD compared to the streaming platform, it's like I'm in a stadium. Oh, wow. The difference is because you can really feel that obviously the songs have to be compacted yes, to put on those platforms exactly. for people because else they won't fit. So you can actually hear the ch ch difference in quality of the sound. Ah, 
That is so interesting. Yeah. I think for me, what may have made me unaware of that is that I was listening to CDs for a long time and then we went into the streaming space and then I went into that and didn't kind of go yes. back and listen to physical albums. But I'm actually going to do that. I'm going to do that today because <laughs> I do have a, a car that plays CDs. So oh, lovely. I'm actually going to do that and check you'll that feel, out. You'll feel the difference. Mm. Absolutely. What do you enjoy about performing live? Oh, my goodness. Performing live to me is like transformative it is out of this world it feels like a portal to i don't know some just ethereal spirited ah it is just a thing of its own it's like it's like its own planet for me okay i love performance i think it's where i get to really celebrate the music with the music lovers where I get to create memories with them, where we have these genuine moments of just purging, healing, twerking, laughing, (laughs) singing along to the music. And it's just, it's the closest thing to heaven, honestly, to me, in my mind. Okay. I I, I don't know if I've been to heaven, (laughs) but I would imagine it's a lot like performance. Okay. So I've got a point of debate and discussion around this and I have it with a lot of artists. Okay. I'm that person that's right in front, dancing, jamming, not really twerking. (laughs) Oh, come on. (laughs) I'll take my phone out for a couple of videos, a couple of um, shots, and then I put it away because I like to be in the moment. I notice a lot of people around me have their phones out for a lot of the time, 60, 70, 80% time, tweeting, Mm. posting, whatever they're doing at that time. From the person on the stage, perceptually seeing a bunch of phones compared to eyes or that. Do you feel it takes away from that energy and that interaction? Or it's just, as we mentioned earlier, digital world where society is at the moment? You know, it's it's actually such an awkward thing. Because on the one hand, I mean, when there's a camera in your face, you're cognizant of that. When there's a whole bunch, a sea of phones, which is what it sometimes looks like, um, you're cognizant of that. You see it. And Because of what it is that I do and being a performer, I find that I feel the need to play to that. And I know that it's going to be posted on social media. I know that social media is a currency for my work. So I understand the importance of that. But at the same time, I really, I just wish we could go back to a time where we just lived in the moment and we just enjoyed the shows for what it is that they were. And we weren't so concerned about documenting it. And we just lived in the moment, yeah. you know. Um, when I watch, like, these old live performances of, like, you know, your Michael Jacksons mm-hmm. and all of that, you literally see stadiums of people. Even Brenda Fassi was doing, like, a stadium show with a lot of other incredible acts from here at home. And... Like, there was no phones. It was just people getting lost in the world of music and having themselves a beautiful time, Mm. allowing themselves to be taken away by it. And I just just wish we could go back to that. And I feel like, similarly to you, I'm the same as, like, a music lover myself. I will go to the show. I will take a few clips just to say, okay, I was here. Document, show some love to the person on social media. And then I tuck it away and I get lost. Exactly. And I feel like maybe that's the the winning formula. That's the recipe. Yeah. I was actually speaking to an artist in the UK and they went to a Garth Brooks concert Ooh. and they said they the phones were taken away. They were put away somewhere and they weren't allowed to use it. And they were actually saying the experience was completely different now because it wasn't the stress of like trying to get the perfect shots, perfect yeah. angles, perfect things. It was just like, okay, just relax into it. Yeah, exactly. And I find... Uh, You know, it's such a tricky thing because I get it. I'm a part of it. I'm in the matrix. We're all doing it, you know, uh, where we want to document in that way. But I I just imagine a world of being able to be carefree, knowing you don't have to do all that, you know. And I think I would love to like lock everyone's phones away (laughs) (laughs) for a show and then maybe have it recorded so that I can give everyone a link to watch the thing, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Because I get it. You want to relive the moment. You want to, you know. But yeah, I think, yeah, we need to lock these phones up. Let's <laughs> lock them up. <laughs> <laughs> What's next? What's coming up next? We know the latest album's just sort, just been released a couple of weeks ago. So yes. what are the uh, short-term, long-term plans? What's happening? Oh, so we've just had an amazing album launch. Yes. On the 1st of June. It was absolutely 
amazing. <laughs> and um, I'm excited that uh, we are going to be presenting a work at the National Arts Festival, which is a festival that happens in Makanda, South Africa. And uh, it is really off of me being um, the Standard Bank Young Artist uh, winner for music. So I get to present a work. And with this new album out, I'm just very excited that that gets to live in that space um, that is a legacy space, you know. Uh, but there's a lot of exciting things for the year, some of which I can't talk about. <laughs> but I'm excited about it, you know. I'm excited for the unknown. I'm excited for the things that will surprise me about this new year, this new offering. Um, and we'll just let the music play on, man. I mean, what, what else is there? Exactly. Yeah. So playing music, I love this game. I know if I had to ask you this question in two minutes, 20 years, five minutes, 50 years, I know your answer will be different every time. Uh -huh. I understand that and I recognize that because there are millions of them. I'm not saying favorite. I'm saying top of mind. If you had to push play to five songs by other artists, <laughs> we're going to finish this conversation. <laughs> I just have to break into an operatic sound. <laughs> What would those five songs be and by whom? And if you can't think of specific songs, maybe just five artists. Oh, my goodness. Okay. You know what? I, I will not be a party pooper. <laughs> I will play this game. Yes. I will not be held to this. This is just right now. In today, this moment. In this moment. In this moment, yes. There's this song that I heard um, called Him. Uh, and uh, a beautiful soul uh, called Yonelam Nana. Uh, plays in that I forget what the name of the collective is but the song is called Him it's okay. so beautiful I think that's my number one um, Him as in H-I-M or H-Y-M-N H-Y-M-N okay yeah okay. yeah. and then there is hmm, top five right now top five right now I think the key is to like not overthink the thing exactly right just let them just let it come let them, on to me yeah <laughs> Um, let's see. So top five. The thing that an artist that comes to mind as well is Victoria Monet. Yes. Uh, Moment. Okay. I love that song. Um, that's two. We've got three more. Miriam Make Bawelela right now. Ooh, King Tat, um, Mazwai. This is my number four. There's this song off of her new album. Um, that's the name of the song. Yes, Kunzima. I love that song. Oh my gosh. Um, and the fifth one, maybe let me shamelessly plug myself. Of course, yes. A song of mine called Imitanda Zoyetu. Yeah, Lovely. which is the first song from this album that uh that came to be that was written and, and made. Okay. So yeah, that's my top five right right now. And then uh, Kendrick Lamar is an honorable mention. Honorable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So this album took a period of time to create from your previous album. Mm -hmm. Was it just going with the flow? Was it taking time out to just take a step away in order to experience life, in order for those experiences to come through in a creative way? Or what was the reason for sort of the break between the two albums oh my um well i find i mean i have to start by saying i don't think i'm a mastermind of my creative process i'm not like um a strategist that's trying to bring things out at the right time okay. you know um i think it's just a leaning into what feels like should be happening and maybe because of the kind of artist I am and the way that the work comes to be, it does require me to live and to experience life, to observe, to go through some things, to work through some things, to question other things, to be left with more question marks <laughs> <laughs> and, and maybe to figure some things out as well, you know. So between 2020 was my second album, Inga Negwane, and then it took a whole four years for this one, Nom Tandazo, to come out. Um, and I wouldn't have it any other way. I think it's a time where I need to kind of be cocooned and get into my mind, get into what it is that I'm thinking about, where it is that this music story is taking me. And 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 then when it's time to be a butterfly, you know, I just <laughs> butterfly, you know. Um, but yeah, the creative process, I, I just... 
It's funny as as long as I've been a friend of music, it it always fascinates me. I'm always left with more questions, with more curiosity and just a sense of unknowing. And it's very humbling. Uh but it's beautiful. I like it. When you are creating, are you able to listen to music by other artists or do you step away from that in order to focus on your creation and um I've heard some other artists say so not to be unconsciously or subconsciously influenced by the others or are you able to just be and know okay this is a period of time I'm creating and out of that I can just listen to others. Oh, you know, I don't think as creative people we can remove ourselves from being influenced by the world around us and that includes other artists. I mean, we we take it in. I take in Tupac, I take in uh what it, whatever's happening um whatever is in my ether at the time and i think it's what makes the music beautiful it's what makes it 5d it's what you know gives it that experiential feeling when you're listening to it um but when i'm in studio i like to have a tunnel vision i like to really just zoom into it and get into the honesty of the music because i feel like for me that's the thing that i want to protect um and the honesty just requires silence from me uh silence from listening to anything else silence from consciously consuming something else um i just need to zone out i need to be i need to tap into the truest part of what the work is you know so yeah for me it looks like silence but who knows maybe with the next album maybe my fourth album will require me to mm. take it all in like a sponge you know what i mean yeah So yeah, there's no telling. And when you are listening to uh songs by other artists, are you able to relax and just take it for what it is or is your creative brain unpacking what they've created? I don't like to listen to music as a musician. I think is... it's boring. I think it's boring. <laughs> <laughs> I like to listen to music as a music lover and to okay. kind of tuck away all the things that I know to be true. well from my perspective yeah. at least when it comes to music and and just enjoy it the way that I did growing up okay when I didn't know what I know now okay. and it was just magical and I was just taking in the artist world for what it is that they were offering you know I don't like I'm very self critical of myself as a creative person I do not like to be critical of other people's work I think I understand that there's space for that but I for me it feels entitled because this is someone's sacred like really sensitive vulnerable yes. place and now we have all these things to say uh oh, I don't get it you know I just know these things that resonate with me things that might not resonate with me and I think that's with okay. everyone really and um yeah but I mean there'll be moments to be very honest where I'll geek about certain things you know where I'm like oh this time signature you did that <laughs> oh that modulation let's go or where I'll, i'll really be tickled by like maybe a vocal approach vocal stacks mm. the kinds of synths that were used you know so i will geek um when it comes to certain things when they pop out but okay. my first listen has to be relaxed purely for the love of just wanting to take you in as you are as a musician I love that. So Zoe, the podcast is listened to throughout the world. As a final message, what would you like to say? Oh, as a final message to the whole world. <laughs> <laughs> That's a mammoth mammoth task. Uh well, um folks, it is a beautiful time to be alive. It's a weird time to be alive. It's an interesting time to be alive. May we just continue to be kind. um and recognize the humanity in each other um as we navigate this really interesting journey that we're all walking i know it's different to different people mm-hmm. from different parts of the world um and hopefully we're able to take all these differences and and celebrate them and 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 love on them and have a good time with them uh but i'm just yeah i'm grateful to be alive i'm grateful that music is one of the loves of my lives And I'm just excited to rock and roll. And let's rock and roll together. Let's do it. Come on, let's crowd surf. <laughs> <laughs>
So guys, as Zoe says, let's rock and roll, let's crowd surf, let's be kind, let's honor each other, our differences, and see each other for us as humans, not the differences that they portray. This is Celeb Savant, signing out. Another production from Solid Gold Podcasts.